okay. I greet all my brothers and sisters who may be listening. I come to you as your brother. I am sure you would like to know something about me, so my words will have more meaning to you, so you will have some idea where they come from. My native name is Hohongwi Tutiwa. This was given to me by my native father when he adopted me as his son. Within his people, those of the higher religious order are allowed to adopt the son and daughter. And so I was adopted and given my, my name and became a member of my tribe according to their traditions. I became my father's ki'ikeld, his young hawk, his learner, and his son. He was a hundred years old when I met him. He was a chief priest, a member of the higher religious order of his people, an ancient people who live in the southwest, and you know them as the Hopi too. My father spent time teaching me the knowledge that he wished to give forth according to the instructions that were given to them. At the end of this fourth world, knowledge of our Earth Mother and purification time were to be shared with all of our brothers and sisters. This was their duty as members of the higher religious order to share this knowledge. Together with my father for two years after I was instructed and taught as his young hawk, I shared together with him this knowledge in many places. You may have known him on the internet where a chat room was set up for him and a forum by the name he used there which was Wikima or Wikimaho. This was the name he used there. As I said, my father's people were instructed at the end of the fourth world to share this knowledge. My father's signs and visions, his dreams, and the signs with us now in the world indicate clearly that this was the time to follow those instructions. My father died at the age of 102, and since the 1990s, I've been continuing to do that work, to share that knowledge with you. This is ancient knowledge. This is knowledge which has been kept, and now is the time to give it back to you, Earth Mother's children. It belongs to you. And though there is still some debate and discussion and confusion among different elders about whether to give this out. Without a shadow of a doubt, this follows the instructions that were given to us. And nothing but good can come forth about sharing knowledge of our Earth Mother and purification time, which is the main body of knowledge I'm going to share with you now. So let me begin. I am your brother. But in this age we've forgotten many truths of the earth that we live upon. Our Earth Mother, in one of the sacred teachings, is called our land and our life. She is our land, we know her as our planet Earth. We walk upon her body. This is her feminine side. But she is too a living being, and within her great heart is also life, consciousness and life, for she is a great living being embodying the life of the Great Spirit that fills the universe. For us, the universe is alive, and that life is nested throughout all of creation. The universe is alive, so the galaxies are alive. So, solar systems are alive, and each world in the solar system is a living entity, such as your Earth Mother, from whom life comes down to us. So our second great spirit law is the one who gives us the spirit of life is the one we belong to. This is our Earth Mother. She gives us our life, and I will talk about this in a bit more later. And she gives us our food and our clothing and our shelter and this beautiful world we live upon. Indeed, she is our all. She is our everything. She is our creator, embodying 
the great life of the great spirit within her. She is the nearest expression of that Godhood to us, our Creator. That is why we say the one who gives us the spirit of life is the one we belong to. She is our all. The one who is deserving of our gratitude and our devotion and our appreciation. But in this age we've forgotten all she means to us. She's become a planet. But she is truly a mother in the fullest meaning of the word. She is our living mother. She is the one that watches over us. She is the one that takes us into her womb. And when we die, we're held within her great spirit home and later return to new bodies and new life to continue our growth. Within each lifetime, we have the opportunity to learn from the choices we make to be more loving and more giving of ourselves. This we learn through the choices they make and the consequences that are returned to us. But that is only part of our journey with our Earth Mother. For through the ages, she car has carried us. And at certain points within the cycles of the Great Spirit's operations of nature, the universal laws of nature the Great Spirit has set in motion, there is a natural process that occurs that we call purification time. And something special happens within the nest of our solar system something which scientists in this age still do not understand. For at the time of purification, each mother world of our system is in labor, literally in her birth pains to give birth. How can this be, you say? How can the earth give birth? We must see our earth as a living being, a great living organism, who like a human mother, but in a greater sense and scale, gives birth. How is that so? Deep within the core heart of our Earth Mother, there is an inner core heart of the Earth. Scientists know about this core heart, this great iron ball that they speak of at the center. Can you believe in your hearts when I tell you that this core is going to come out? That there is a birth canal within the Earth herself and each planet of our system in which a great egg is going to come out? It's going to come out in an opening for our Earth Mother in the Antarctic. And it is this laboring that is going on now with our Earth Mother that is responsible for the strange weather and storms we are seeing, for the increased earthquake activity and volcanic activity, increasing storms and strange weather. For the birth canal where Earth Mother's egg will come out is in the Antarctic Ocean. And already the heat is coming out of this place. It is affecting the atmosphere in the Antarctic and the ocean currents. And these things are disturbing the climate and the continuing birth pangs of our mother will increase as she prepares to birth her egg. This is a natural process, which my people call the secret of the hidden egg, the hidden moon. For when the egg is born and ejected, from our Earth Mother's birth canal, it will become a moon. This is the origin of moons. And if you look closely at our own moon, you will see the mares or seas are what we would expect to see from the molten outpourings of when the core emerges from our Earth Mother, settling into these seas. And what we think of as craters, many of these are when the egg emerges from our Earth Mother, bubbling with the molten lava, some of these gas bubbles collapse in, as they enter the coldness of space and settle into what you see now as craters. Think about these things. I know these ideas are new to many of you, but I can tell you that my people have known many of the discoveries and things you see now, and also they know of what is about to happen. And it is to help prepare you, is to help you to understand what is coming, that this message comes from your mo Earth Mother and those beings who serve her, those ancestors and spirits who are no longer in the flesh, but are working now to help us prepare, help for the great changes that are coming. The signs of those changes are all around you. You may not be reading about them or hearing about them, 
but they are happening. You are seeing strange weather occurring that is unusual. And if you look closely, you'll see that there are more intense earthquakes coming more often every day. And these things will escalate to the coming of the birth of the core. Now I will tell you something. This is not something to be afraid of. This is not something to fear. For those who understand, this is a wonderful, joyful time. This is the end journey for us who have traveled so far with our Mother Earth through many ages. For what happens after the birth of Earth Mother's egg, and each world of our system will do the same. As soon as the egg emerges, each Mother World will fly in orbit closer to the Sun. They will enter a new orbit and density, and the life that our Earth Mother will then give forth upon her surface will be newly evolved life advanced life forms evolve to live in the new environs closer to the Sun. The planet we call Venus and the body we call Mercury will enter into the Sun. They will fuel the Sun. They will be converted into energy. This is a process that we know and has been kept as the sacred path of migration. The migrations and evolution of life at the purification times that moves life ever forward. So when you look in the fossil record and you see all the ancient forms of man we've lived in before, these are when our Earth Mother was in her earlier orbits. Such life continues and evolves, for this is one of the great things we know in our knowledge. Evolution. Evolution, as I'm describing it to you, is a fuller understanding than perhaps you have now. One of the scientific theories that my father knew and shared with me, it is a scientific theory that agrees with our knowledge called punctuated equilibria. Scientists have found that evolution does not seem to occur gradually, but the fossil record indicates that it goes along for a long period of time, pretty much the same in equilibrium. And then suddenly, there is a big advancement in evolutionary forms, punctuated time. To our people, this agrees with our understanding of purification times, when Earth mothers give birth to their cores, their core eggs, which sometimes called mystery eggs, which also agrees with the egg mysteries that can be found throughout history. The core heart of the Earth is sacred just as the Earth Mother is both land and life, her body and her life within her. For our Earth Mother, we are in what we call the fourth world, the orbit, second orbit from the Sun, for we consider Mercury an ejected core. How is this? I will describe what will occur at the end of purification time. Our Earth Mother will give birth to her core. It will become a moon. It will remain in this orbit. Our present Earth Mother and our present Moon will move forward to the orbit now held by the morning, evening, day star we call Venus. Venus and Mercury will enter into the Sun and be converted to energy. Our Earth Mother then will be in the orbit of what we call the fifth world, the forever world. And there we will receive our perfected forms, our perfected bodies, our incorruptible forms, our immortal bodies. This is spoken about throughout the ages by prophets and seers and within the religions of the world. This is what our Earth Mother is about to reach, the crowning place of our system, and those children of hers who hold fast to her, who trust in her, who know she is our land and life, will be carried with her, with to their own crowning life in the fifth world. If we die upon our world, we are not lost, for our Earth Mother holds us within her great life, as she has done throughout the ages, returning us to new bodies and new life. Those who hold fast to our Earth Mother through this purification, unafraid to stay with her, unafraid to die with her, for death holds no sting for her good children, 
who strive to live the best lives that they can and always trust in their Mother Earth, unafraid to die upon her good soil. Let me take a moment to arrest my thoughts. When receiving new knowledge like this, our minds are filled with so many ideas that we've received within the society and culture we've grown up. It's not always easy to incorporate new ideas. I ask you, test these words within yourself, pray upon them, meditate upon them, and only when they come true to you do you accept them and act accordingly upon them. For this knowledge is only being shared with you. It is up to each of you individually to find that truth. The knowledge that I'm sharing with you is known in different ways by other peoples. They have bits and pieces of it and hope to, hopefully this knowledge will be shared and go forth to other elders so they can match it up with their own knowledge, incorporate it, and fit it all together. So this knowledge goes out to all of my brothers and sisters and to all elders all across the earth that we may prepare ourselves for what is about to happen. What I'm speaking to you about, what I'm sharing with you, is just the operation of nature itself. I think you will know when we are humble in our attitude that though we have gained a lot of knowledge in the last hundred years or two, we're still children in many ways and we have much to learn. We learn best when we are humble, when we bow ourselves and do not think we know so much, when we ask respectfully to a greater power than ourselves. Please, I am one of your small children everything I possess you have given to me. Please show me what is good for me to know. Please guide me in my life. Please help me. Then this will help you open your minds more as when you were a child and you listened and paid attention and took knowledge in as you gained more experience. This will help you take in this knowledge now and so it can find its rightful place in preparing you or the changes. Now I must speak of another thing. First you must understand what I'm telling you means that there is great meaning and purpose to the universe, that we've been evolving within the universe according to its purpose and plan, and that we've come a very long way with our earth to where we are now as homo sapien, man wise. But this is not the end of our evolutionary journey. This final step up the ladder of evolution we are about to take with our Earth Mother at the end of this purification time. This will then will be the end of all we've been striving for. We are so close now to the end of that journey. We need to hold fast to our Mother one more time to receive the crowning end point of that journey. But it will not be easy. You must open your minds and hearts we must listen to our minds and hearts. We might not, must not always follow the crowd, but follow the wisdom that comes from within our own hearts and the wise words that we hear. Those that will stay with their Earth Mother and those who will leave their Earth Mother, they, these are two groups which will divide us in the days ahead. How can we leave our Earth Mother, you might say? This is the part now I must speak of. I do not like to speak of it, but you must hear of these things so you will not be deceived by those people who would exploit your ignorance. There is another place our science has not learned about, but our knowledge tells us this place has been secretly used for many centuries. This place is not for us. For our journey, our path as the Great Spirit has made it for us, is with our Earth Mother. She is the one who carries us through the ages. She is the one that takes us home in the fifth world. It is only with her, upon her good soil, that can we can reach our completion, that we can reach our crowning place, that we can reach our perfected life. 
In the days ahead, you will be lured and pushed from your earth mother. There will be those who will come. There will be announcements that you will wake up one morning and you will hear everywhere on radio and TV of some great discovery. Another place you can go to that's known about. It's a time related to compass direction. So before you hear this announced, you're hearing it from me and from my father and those elders who know about it. Time is direction. And with this knowledge, you can enter into this other time structure that exists. It has always existed as part of the universe. It is not meant for us. Our Earth Mother is meant for us. She is our land and life. When you see this place announced, when you see them presenting this as some wonderful place with amazing technology and they tell you you will live forever or live for a very long time and then you hear announcements that the earth is going to be destroyed to cause fear in you to stay with your earth mother that her core is going to come out or other announcements of fear to drive you from your earth mother do not believe them your earth mother is about to move she will birth her egg, but she will not be destroyed. She will take her good children with her to their crowning forms, to their crowning life. Trust in that. Pray and meditate upon that. Do not be deceived by those who will take you to this other place, for it is not what you are going to be told. This is a place where you cannot move forward to your perfected life. This is a place for those who have gone against the Great Spirit's path. This is a place for those who put themselves above the Great Spirit, who think they do not need our Creator, do not need to follow His laws, do not need to follow His plan. They would tell you anything to lure you to that place, to get you to go to that place, because they need you there for their dark purpose, not for your good, as they will try to make it seem. But you must listen to your own minds, to your own hearts. You must listen to the voice of your Mother Earth within your heart. You must not give in to fear. Remember, death is not something to be afraid of. Death is as natural as breathing. Life and death and evolution is part of the Great Spirit's plan that we've all been following with our Mother Earth and moving us forward in our own purity and as our Earth Mother has moved us from world orbit to world orbit in the greater life forms that we possess. So let us trust in her. Now we'll take a break and rest for a moment and we will come back again and I will speak with you some more. <laughs> 